Hi, I'm uh, Drawing with Gerard. I'm Gerard Leary. This is our second week, and we started a, a leaf the first week, and we got it mostly done, but I'm just going to go over very quickly a few points, and you should be able to see the leaf right here, and I'm just going to go over just how you do the diagram in the leaf, how you build it up. So there are five points. They're called lobes on the leaf. One, two, three, four, five. This is a maple leaf. They all have the same thing. So I'm just going to show you how you can structure it. So we start way down where the stem is. We go all the way up to the top. Then the stem is right about here. So we're going to take a line over here and a line over here. And then we're going to do a line here and a line here. One, two, three, four, five. So on the top, we're just going to be kind of making a top of a tent, almost the top of a star. Same thing here and over here and then down here. So we know these are pretty even. We'll put a few veins in here because the veins feed the food to the leaves. Everyone see that okay? Now we'll take this and just move it around on kind of squiggly lines and then bring it right over here. Same thing here. Okay, we'll take this one. And then this one here. And then down on the bottom, we're going to go right to the tip of the tip of the stem. So that's basically the lines. We'll just do a double line here for the stem. I'm going to take a yellow pencil. We're only going to use a few pencils. Um, yellow, orange, red green and brown. I don't know how many that is. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to fill in the top of it. Very light pressure, just with circles. We don't want to leave any lines, so just very light pressure. We're going to do it circles. We'll just move over here. Nice light pressure. But if you do circles, you eliminate the lines, the vertical lines that we don't want to have. Just move all the way down. Nice and even. I'm going to do one side and then I'll do the other side. So we're going to do something called layering, which means putting one color on top of the other color. And then we'll do burnishing, which means blending the colors together. So I just want to make sure that this side, there isn't any white showing. All you need is yellow pencil. And you can put it on its side the way I'm having it on its side so you blend a lot more area. Just light pressure. And we just want to fill in as much of the white as we can. So we're just going to do the left side 
of the leaf right now and you'll see the difference in the finished product. I'm going to do this pretty quickly because we did it last week. Now we're going to take orange. I like to sharpen my pencils. I use an electric sharpener but if you don't have one just a regular sharpener. What you need is um, Crayola colored pencil crayons, 24 count box, two pink erases like that, a pencil sharpener, and then a tablet of about 40 pages. That's really all you need. And if you want to blend, I use paper towels because a lot of people don't have a blender. And I'll get to that in a minute. So we're layering orange over the yellow and they'll look very nice together. Our goal is to achieve really brilliant fall colors. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we just want to get the colors together. So I think there are just five colors we're going to use. Yellow, orange, red, brown, and green. I don't know if it's five or six. I can't say things and count at the same time. Can you see how that's changing? It's almost a light red. Now I'm going to take just a piece of this is regular a paper towel. And I'll just fold it over a little bit because we don't have burnishes. But if you just go like that with a paper towel or if you have a Q-tip, that'll work. Or a white pencil will work too. What's this? What I'm doing is blending the colors together. You might see where yellow is stronger than the orange, but that's okay. We just want to uh, do this really quickly. So that's blended pretty well. I'm going to take a red pencil and finish out what we're doing. Okay. Again, see how I'm holding the pencil from the tip? From the very end of it. Gives you much more flexibility with your arm. You can do a lot more that way. Like this, that's how you write. But when you draw, you can move your hands around. Nice and even, and I do curves, circles. That really helps. A little bit more pressure, not really um, hard pressure, but just a little lighter. A little, I mean, a little stronger. Now before I blend this in, I'm just going to put the tips just a little red for them to stick out. Very easy. Nice and easy. Just like an accent. Again, circles, a little bit of pressure. Okay, we've got one side done. Now, a little bit of paper towel. You want it pretty tight so you don't go outside.
Now you get pretty good color. I can blend the tips a little bit. So I'm going to blend the tips with a white pencil if I have a white pencil. You can see what I'm doing? I'm just softening the tip so the red blends in with the color on the leaf itself. You should have a white pencil in your outfit, in your uh, set. Okay, now we're going to go back and do the other side. So, yellow pencil, light pressure, circular on the top. Our goal is to achieve brilliant color because some leaves, I was looking at them yesterday, are really spectacular and other leaves are dull. Depends on the type of tree. This is uh, sugar maple, which um, have the most brilliant color. Why are they called sugar maple? Maple syrup. And they use the maple wood. So it gives us beautiful color. It gives us protection in the summer with the green leaves. And a canopy, a canopy is like a covering. And it gives us, yeah, great color in the fall. And maple syrup, I, I think, in the spring. I think it's in the spring after the winter. It's a good Jeopardy question. Do you see the difference now in color? That's about 10 minutes. We're almost finished with it. Let's go with the orange. Again, light color, a little bit more pressure, circular motion. Try to stay within the lines. This circular motion takes away from any hard lines which would look unnatural. And it gives a, just one color, even though there's another color underneath. It fills it nicely. If you haven't caught up to me, if I'm going too fast, just give me an email at lowercase letters, Gerard, G-E-R-A-R-D, 1616, golden, G-O-L-D-E-N, drive, D-R-I-V-E, at Gmail. Just give me an email and I'll try to square you away with what is going on if this is too quick for you. Don't worry about it if you just started drawing. All you need to do is practice this a few times. And I think um, Kurt said, will this be on at 3.30 tomorrow? I kind of think so. So we'll try to repeat it a few times during the week. I'll take the um, paper towels and burnish it. it. It just means blend. Burnishing means blend. And then I'll put a little bit of red on top of that. 
Now you can erase the outside lines where I did it in pencil, or you can do the outside lines in a yellow or an orange or a red so it looks natural. I, I like to use pencil. Okay, so that's basically it. I'm going to put a little red on top of this. Nice and easy. So we want to have the color on one side pretty much match the color on the other side. So that's why we're putting the colors in that sequence, yellow, orange, red. Now you could put more pressure if you wanted to get more um, dynamic color. But I think to start off with, you really need to understand, if you take your time and just put a little pressure on, you'll see how the colors blend together. Circular motion. I'm going to blend it one more time. Again, you can use Q-tips or a white pencil. You can use a white pencil to blend. Or you can go and get blenders at most of the retail stores around here. They should... Um, they should have all those supplies. But Crayola, 24-pack set of Crayola colored pencils. Very inexpensive and uh, really good pencils for the uh, price itself. Now, I just want to do a couple of things. I'm going to take a light brown. A little bit of dark brown to do the stem. See, I'm doing one line of the stem. And, and then make it lighter. I'm going to put some green in here. And go back. a little bit darker. Then I'm just going to show you one thing. The bottom of the leaf has what is called chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is how the leaf is fed. There's a thing called photosynthesis. I'm not going to get too scientific on you. But chlorophyll converts the sunlight into food. And that's how the leaves survive when they blossom, when they're green. The photosynthesis converts sunlight into food. And when the foliage comes, you'll see the tip of the leaf with the, the last part of the chlorophyll. And underneath, it, underneath the leaves are the colors that emerge once the leaf starts to um, die. Those, sorry, let me shut this off. Sorry. So that's basically it. It's a different color than what I did, but that took a lot of time. This only took about 15 minutes. Okay, if you have any questions, just email me on that. There's another one right there, a little bit darker.
Hi again, uh, this is Gerard. We're going to do the next subject, which is a pumpkin, all related to fall. And um, this is kind of an optical illusion. I'll put it up here so you can see it on the overhead. So to create the um, circular effect, we're just going to start drawing here, which is the main, and make these smaller as it curves around. So let me put my glasses on first. I'm going to do the top part first, I should say. I'm going to do the stem. So how do we do that? Let me do this. So I start with a little brown. And curve it. Now I have a little vein coming down. We'll take a little green. We're going to use green, yellow, and brown. And there's a lot of vertical lines in the I forget what they call that. The stock? I'm running I'm running blank. I think it's a stock. We'll put a, a little brown next to it. A little brown on top. You ever see what I'm doing here? I'm trying to fill in the white with a couple of different colors. Brown, green, and we'll do a little yellow and maybe some black. Everyone is okay with what we're doing so far? I'm going to blend these colors together, but I'm also going to try to put a little black in there too. Just a little black. Just very light. It can use, uh, you can use it however you want. It just breaks up the colors. I don't know if this is called a stalk or a stem. I think it's a stem. But if you get a little black and a yellow and green, it kind of reflects the colors.
Everyone okay with that? Now we're going to build the pumpkin around the stem or the stalk. So the first one I'm going to do is this one right here. And it's going to come down from the center. as if it's almost underneath. Then we'll take the second one. Watch how it comes in like that. The third one, hope everyone can see OK. Now we'll try this one over here. And another one. Remember, these sections are going smaller and smaller. And then we're going to do the back. So those are the basic formations. We'll make these lines a little bit darker. So this gives the illusion that it's very round because the, the lines become smaller and the front section is larger. It's more exposure so you can see it better. I hope everyone's with me. Okay, that's basically what we've done. Now, let me just see how many oranges I have in here. Just bear with me for a second. Now you can use orange and yellow. It's a combination of two, and I'll show you how that works. Okay. I really like sharp pencils. Here's a little illusion. Do you see the white part here? It's an illusion, so it makes the pumpkin shiny or reflective. And it, all, all the pumpkin is not the same color. It's darker here. You'll see a shadow here, it's darker, it's a little bit darker here. A little yellow down here. We're going to get to it all. But we're going to start right underneath the stem or, or the stalk. And you can use the side of your pencil. You can use a lot of pressure on it. Nice and heavy. We'll go over these uh, segment lines that I just drew in. You can use a lot of pressure on that. But it's always good to use the side of your pencil because you can cover a lot more area that way. So you're getting the illusion that the stem or stalk is right in the center of the pumpkin because of the lines behind it.
Yeah, we'll go a little bit further down. We're going to blend with this, but we want to get a lot established first. I just want to kind of block in where the reflections are going to be. So this center strip, right where I'm drawing around, is where the reflection is going to be. So you're going to leave a white section. Then a little bit higher on the next segment. And a little bit higher in this section. And then we'll do the end a little darker. So let me take a darker orange. I don't know if I was using this or not. So this is a lot darker. But we want to get a fullness to it. Side of the pencil will really help you. Just holding the pencil on the side and putting a lot of pressure. But try to stay in the lines. You can do the circular motion too, but on the side of the pencil you don't really have to because there aren't going to be too many lines with the side. Just want to make sure that where the stalk or stem is, that it looks like it's, it's really embedded in the, uh, in the pumpkin itself. And we can fill it in lightly, and then we'll go back and get more detail. If there's any questions, you have my email, Gerard, lowercase letters, G-E-R-A-R-D, 1616, golden, G-O-L-D-E-N, drive, D-R-I-V-E, at gmail. If you have any questions, just send them along to me, and I'll answer the questions the next time we do. I'm going to try to do a class once a week and then uh, rebroadcast it a few times, I guess. That's what the, the plan is anyway. So now, we're going to put a little dark brown in the lines between the segments. These sections are called segments. And this is going to really define how deep the pumpkin is. Put one up here. I'm using a brown pencil, a dark brown. Nice and easy. If you have a problem with the straight line, just do a little bit at a time. You'll get it. Nice and easy. Bring that line right underneath the stalk. Nice and easy.
Now on the bottom of the pumpkin, it sits on uh, the ground. Sometimes people put cardboards underneath it, but it gets a lot of water, a lot of moisture on the ground, so it's softer. So I put a yellow, little yellow in there. It kind of gives that effect of softness. And I'm going to put a, a little bit yellow as a, it just blends in with the color here. It doesn't really affect it too much. Again, the side of the pencil, it works. We're making good progress. It's only 1.30. Again, if you have any questions or if I'm going too fast, just give me an email at lowercase gerard, G-E-R-E-R-D, 16, number 16, golden, G-O-L-D-E-N, drive, at gmail. So we've got a pretty good base right there. I'm just going to fool around with the colors a little bit. I have a lighter orange. I'm going to use it over here just to see how things work. I can always color over it. But with that brown, that brown should start to stand out so you can really see the definition of the segments. The segments are the sections. Nice and easy using the sides of the pencil. Take a look at how that reflection comes down. So it's higher here than it is here. I'm going to make this darker, but I just want to fill in a little piece here. I think everyone's doing good. Again, I don't want you to, to uh, get discouraged because if you need, I can go over this again if I did it too fast for you this time. Because I know that a lot of you are beginners and this might be a little bit too quick for you, but just let me know by email and we'll do it again. Or do it over again, or at least part of it. Just tell me the parts that you thought were too difficult. Again, I sharpen my pencils a lot, so if you have a regular sharpener, and you should get one, um, that's going to really help you. Or if I have any with me. Okay, now I have my darker pencil. And I'm going over the, the colors that were lighter the first time I went through. Remember, these reflections are important. They add to the illusion of the pumpkin itself. It makes the pumpkin look shiny.
holding a pencil at the side and just going up and down, you can put a little pressure on it. You're going over the yellow on the bottom. This pumpkin doesn't have to be absolutely spherical, absolutely round, because they, they aren't necessarily totally round. If you go down to um, any of the places, uh, like Winthrop Marketplace, you might see some pumpkins that are a lot of different shapes and colors. Incidentally, on the leaves, I was at the Bremen Street Park over in East Boston, right at... Um, airport station on the blue line. And there are some brilliant trees down there. They're red, they're maple trees. So you, if you have a chance um, this week or on the weekend, I'd go down there and take a picture of some or pick up some off the ground. Because once they're on the ground, they're dead. But you can put them in water and hopefully they'll last a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to try to make this a little bit darker because the pumpkin that I have is really dark. I'm going to take a little blender, paper towel, see what I can get out of it. Again, you can use a Q-tip or a white pencil. A paper towel covers a lot of space, especially on a subject like this. That's why I'm using it. But just experiment with um, a Q-tip or paper towels. You'll see how they work. They can get a lot more detail out of them. There are places on the pumpkin, I don't know if you can see them on this, pumpkin, but I'm going to put a little round marks because pumpkins get dirty. Side of the pencil. When you look at a pumpkin, they're, um, you know, they're coming out of the ground and, and they're not washed off, I don't think, when they come to the marketplace. They're not polished like an apple. So you can just put random marks on it, just circular marks. They don't have to be heavy, just so they look like there's some dirt on them. This is not quite as good as the other one. I must have wore better glasses that day. But when you put in the lines that separate the segments, I think it really helps. I'm going to make this a little bit darker, and then we should be finished. We've got about, uh, let's say, 15 minutes. We should be all set. So again, if I went too fast, don't really worry about it because all you need to do is practice. You can do it over again. I think you have the basic idea. Or if you're really having a problem, again, just give me an email, and I'll answer those questions for you. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Again, if you get into this and you really like it, you can get an electric sharpener at most 
stationary stores. The one I have cost about $40. I like it a lot better than sharpening with a regular sharpener because um, some pencils break and um, when you get up there in really nice pencils they can cost two or three dollars a pencil. So I made that mistake. Again, um, I'm going to fill this in a little bit. And where the reflection is, you can put a little lighter color right up to it. Again, nothing's perfect. The, uh, the pumpkins have dirt on them. The lines aren't perfect. Everyone thinks that a pumpkin is perfectly circular. Well, they're not. Not all of them. Some of them are, but most of them have kind of circular shapes. But some have dents in them. Someone dropped them off the truck. I'm just going to make this a little bit darker. This is uh, called a pencil extender. So you just put the pencil in here, and when it's really shot, it just makes it a lot easier to work with. Pencil extenders. I think you'd probably have to go to a um, art store to get one of those, but they're really worth it because you get a lot more life out of the pencil. I hope everyone likes what we're doing. And again, don't get discouraged if it's not perfect the first time. Because you just keep practicing. You're going to get this. If you do it a couple of times, what I want you to do is sign it and date it and put it on your refrigerator. Because I want everyone who comes into your kitchen to look at it. And what they're going to do is say, who's the artist? And you're going to say very, very modestly, why I am. And um, people are going to be impressed. They're really going to be impressed. And then what you'll tell them is, how did I learn this? Well, I watched Gerard drawing on WCAT Winthrop. And maybe we'll have another artist. So... That is how it's done. I could make this a little bit darker, but I think I had darker pencils when I did the other one. Just a couple of more seconds and we will be finished. So even though these don't actually look exactly alike, I spent about three hours doing that. I spent about 40 minutes doing this. It just takes a lot of time. And those brown um, lines that se um, separate the segments really, really add to the illusional effect. The brown uh, dirt stains and the yellow on the bottom, they all add to it. And I like the stem, too, because the stems are not just stems like you see in a cartoon. They have all colors and they're twisted. Some of them are awfully long. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it because I give that about an 85 or a 90 versus 100 to that. But I did it a lot faster and um, 
takes a while. So that's it for this week. And then we're going to try to do um, either a little bit more of the pumpkin or we're going to do a Macintosh apple next week. That's going to be a real challenge. But let me know what you think, how this is working, or if we're going too fast. And if you have any questions about the material, I'd be happy to answer those. For now, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.